Have you ever come across problems on your project? Like you don't have the licenses, people are not coming to the office, everyone's working from home and that's impacting the productivity. You don't have enough funds, there is a delay, there is a dependency on the vendor and things are not happening on time. This is impacting your schedule. Your resources are not that great, it's a new technology, everybody's working slow, you're losing time, you're losing money. The deadline is coming and not able to meet the deadline. The quality has failed. What we do in such situations? All these are events that trigger risk. In this video, I will help you understand the basic risk management concepts. How do you handle risk? First and foremost thing, risk is an event that is can have a negative effect or a positive effect. When there is a negative effect, it becomes a threat. And when this profit positive, and when it is positive, it is becomes an opportunity. Opportunity. Okay. So, a threat when it occurs has a negative impact. So you have to prepare a response for that. Response. For example, what will you do? if you don't get the money for licenses. So a mitigation plan is that you will use the trial versions initially. So the first way to address response, mitigation for a threat is mitigation, which goes and reduces the impact. Mitigation reduces the impact, reduces the impact of risk. The impact of risk. The corresponding response for opportunity is called as enhance. Enhance means it increases, it increases, increases the probability of achieving that opportunity. Okay, it could be like you are sure that you're going to get a project on say Amazon uh, web services. So you are prudent and get your team initially trained on this so that the money you invest on this particular training enhances the opportunity of meeting the project objective. Now in case the project doesn't happen, it's a risk because you might or may not get the project. But if you get the project, it's an enhanced risk and you're increasing the probability of getting the project. Okay. Sometimes the response to the risk can be you kind of want to avoid the risk. This is a threat, you want to avoid it. Okay. So that could be a response. You don't want to go and do that particular work because you think the loss is going to be very high. So we can't bear that. And then, so in reality, you're avoiding means you are eliminating the risk. Eliminate the risk. And the corresponding positive is the exploit. So in reality, you will go and ensure 100% you get this opportunity. Like in one of the projects when I was working, we did a POC, okay, to go and show it to the client that we can do this new architecture using the new software. So we kind of enhanced our probability of getting the project. And then when the project was given to us, we actually got it in reality. So we exploited that particular positive opportunity and ensured we were benefited with that. So enhance was the POC, this one. Exploitation was a project awarding, project awarded. Okay. So remember to do the POC, you need some time and money and effort. To get the project again, there's time, money, effort. So all those, it's risky to put the positive effort over here, but then you'll do it because you want to use the opportunity. Sometimes you will want to go and say, okay, it's okay, the big, it's not a, a big deal. Let me kind of share 50% of the responsibility on the risk. So you will go and transfer, transfer the risk. Means you will, give it to somebody else you want to give so it will be like an insurance insurance in which the responsibility lies with the other party so they take the overhead of the risk transfer and in exploit it is called as share okay two vendors doing the project so both of them share the risk 
So it's called as share over here. Finally, there will be a situation wherein you would say, okay, let me go and escalate this risk. Like for example, the initial requirements we say like 200 list of requirements and immediately after two, three days, you get to know another 100 are going to come. So you would go and escalate this to the program managers saying that, okay, I got to know that this is also going to come and this has not been taken care in the initial estimates. Escalate it to program management or the sponsor. And then there is another way of responding. You just say you'll accept the risk, saying that, okay, this is a very small risk. We will accept it. Okay, so those are the responses for risk. Let's go a little bit more in detail. So who all who is responsible for risk? Let me help you understand that. So, so it is the PM's responsibility to consolidate, consolidate and track the risk. He does this through a risk register. Risk register. Uh, I'll show you later on what does the risk register look in. And then he'll also have to have the look at the risk report. A risk report. The difference between a risk register and a risk report is the risk register has everything about the risk. Everything about the risk like priority, priority, description, mitigation, okay, then owner, then after that uh, date when the result is right and many more things. This report will actually tell you primarily what is the source of the risk. Is it from the scope or is it from the schedule or is it from technology or is it from legal? Risk report primarily talks about. Remember this for your PMP examination. So let me help you understand a little more about who about the risk. So who all tells us about the risk? Who does tell us about the risk? Tells or informs about the risk? Who informs about the risk? Inform. So everyone on the project, everyone, it could be your team, it could be your sponsor, it could be your customer, okay, team, sponsor, customer, all the, the required stakeholders, everybody can tell about the risk, stakeholders, they inform about the risk. And then now what, when, and a little bit more, so who is the owner of a risk, there is a risk owner risk owner it could be from your own team it could be you it could be the client also like for example if the dependencies of client like for some have to give us access they have to give us the licenses all these dependencies the risk owners will be somebody from the client side okay then let's talk about when of the risk when so when is the risk highest in the initial phase? Initial phase that is just during the initiating of the process. Initiating. Okay. So when do you capture risk throughout the project? Throughout the project. Okay. And then after that, when is the risk least during the closing? Least during the closing of the project launching of the project and one of the interviews was asked like when is the highest so you could go into during the starting of the project and least during the closing of the project and then what do you discuss when is it discussed every time in meetings every time in meetings the first thing you would ask is what are the risks which are you foresee or available okay so that's about when 